Greetings Earthlings. Right, I thought I'd do a quick video just to show what my everyday carry bag looks like. Um, this, this is the kit that I take on every single job. Now the kind of work I do is property maintenance, home improvement stuff, fits some kitchens. Uh, I do quite a lot of like refurbishment work of uh, flats and apartments and and so on. So it gets used for a fairly wide range of work. And as I say, it gets taken on every single job. This is about the fourth version of this bag that I've had. And so far, for the last three or four months, this hasn't let me down once. So this is getting close to being the, the perfect combination of tools. Um, right, let's have a look. Uh, it's a Stanley Fat Max bag, costs about £40 in the UK. Uh, had it a couple of years and it's held up well. Um, this strap's starting to wear out a little bit, but there's a fair amount of weight in, in it. And it gets used all, every day, pretty much. Um, on the front strap here, there's a little thing that I put Sharpies in. Very self-explanatory. On the side here, I've got a hammer. Nothing special, just a cheapo JCB one, but I've had it about probably 10 years now. It's all good. Here there's a little hand plane. Now, this isn't obviously a proper plane, but the reason I've got this is it just gets you out of trouble if you just need to tidy up a bit of timber. Um, and it's very light. If you, actually I've got one here. This is my proper hand plane. It's much heavier. Or this is really, really light. So, yeah, very useful to have. On the front, Stanley tape measure, standard. In the front pouch, a uh, couple of bin liners just for clearing up. You know, you've got to look after your customers' homes, leave them as you found them and so on. A few pairs of gloves. I've got some quite thin work gloves, which I like, so you can feel small parts and so on. Only cost about two quid a pair, so they don't need to last too long. And a pair of blue gloves in case I'm painting or using expanding foam or whatever. And the other side, a couple of bits of sandpaper, just for tidy up any timber or, or whatever. Just a couple of old little festal bits, I think. The wall screwdriver bits, best brand I found. I've used Bosch a few times, but the wall just seemed to be much more robust. Uh, got Torx in there, Allen, and the usual range of sort of posies and fillets and so on. Very useful. Marksman pen for marking um, through components, so you can sort of mark on the wall and see you've got a drill. If you know, you know. And then in here, I just dumped some other random little bits and pieces. So, a couple of little stubby screwdrivers for just getting into tight spots. Second tape measure. This is very accurate. I find it's pretty much bang on to the mill. So I tend to use this for really accurate work, like any sort of cabinet making or anything. And it's got this little tail so you can take internal dimensions which is very useful electrical insulation tape in the compartment at the top I have a, uh, a Bosch gizmo that identifies where electrical um, cables are now I generally just rely on common sense and see if there's any kind of power sockets or light switches above and below where I'm drilling and also just generally when I'm drilling into a wall, I just kind of ease my way in and, you know, if I feel any resistance or anything a bit funny, I stop. But what I found is customers like to see you use this, so it's, it's, it's good to use anyway, but also it's a nice PR exercise as well. Credit card machine to get paid. Cha-ching. Right now inside the bag, if I can undo this one-handed. Looks so easier when other people do it on YouTube. Right. It looks like a mess, but it is in quite good order. I'll just run you through it. 
Um, I always take with me this uh, combi drill. I used to have my drills in a separate sustainer, but it was a bit of a faff to always have this on me, even though it's quite heavy in the bag. It's incredibly handy. Uh, it's a Bosch GSB 18-2. Had it about three years. Works great, 18 volt. Um, I, I leave this DeWalt uh, PZ2 bit in because that's the one we most commonly use in uh, in England. Uh, this has got hammer, drill and screwing settings. Very reliable. Um, also in the back, I've got a quarter inch socket set. This literally costs 10 quid from Screwfix. And again, if you were like a professional car mechanic, you'd never use this, but for occasional use to get you out of the doo-doo. Very handy. Right, maybe let's start at the front and work back. These are commonly my, my most commonly reached for tools, starting at the left. Uh, got two braddles. One is in good condition, just for marking up where the drill or screw on timber, and one is a bit knackered. It just gets used for general pointing and poking around. Various screwdrivers, two big flat heads. They get used a lot just for prying, screwing, undoing paint tins, stirring paint. Very handy. Smaller flat head. Big and small posi drives. Um, this is for, well, this is electricians. It's a Weha screwdriver. I tend just to use this for loosening up power sockets and light switches um, for taping around them before I paint. Obligatory knackered old chisel for prying stuff, scraping stuff. It just generally gets abused. I think everybody's got one of these in their kit. I've even been known to occasionally try and actually chisel with it, but it's blunt as you like, but very handy. File for filing metal and plastics normally. You can file wood, but me, yeah, I just tend to use sandpaper. Couple of blades. This is extremely useful. Like sometimes, if you um, undo a power power socket or a light switch, it kind of all falls apart because the threads in the back box. And obviously, if you're the last person to touch it, it's kind of your problem. This enables you to clean up or even recut the threads in the back box, which is a real lifesaver. Very handy. Probably use it about once a year, but when you need it, you need it. couple of spanners I suppose Barco adjustable gets used all the time a pair of pump pliers mainly used for plumbing but having a very wide jaw can be handy for all kinds of stuff this is a handle off of an old kind of little socket set and I tend to put um, these dual bits in the end if I ever want to do anything by hand which let's face it is pretty rare this stays in here even though I don't use it much what I tend to use this for is if I'm fitting a kitchen and I'm uh, I've done a mitre and I'm clamping the two bits of worktop together um, you have to reach under and do up these really awkward nuts well this is a I think this is a 10 mil we're a joker ratchet spanner so you can just sort of get under and do it up much easier. So I tend just to use this when I'm doing kitchen worktop fitting, but it just stays in the bag. It's a nice little spanner. Extension bar for the drill, for getting into those awkward spaces. A punch, you know, sometimes you're doing something and there's like a, you know, a nail head poking out. Tap it back in. 
Uh, and then there's just a selection of pliers, so needle nose pliers. Just some standard pliers. Um, these are nail pullers. And wire cutters. So that's the front bit. Behind, uh, various bits. So this is a Barco, um, a small Barco saw. This is incredibly handy. Um, to have a hand saw actually in the kit bag is very useful. This has got quite a high TPI count. So actually, if you need to do something fairly neat and tidy, it's perfect. Um, and it's just very handy to have a hand saw in the bag. It's been an absolute revelation. And I've had this about two years and it's still still going strong. Really handy. Random drill bit. I think this is a, what is this? Yeah, this is a six mil masonry bit. These are some blades for my knives. jab saw so if ever you need to kind of um cut any plasterboard or just get a saw into an awkward area very useful this is dead cheap like a fiver uh hacksaw usually used for cutting metal and plastic again very useful to have in the bag rather than a bigger one um here are some blades for the saw Combination square is what it is. Um, great for right angles, but also really useful for measuring the depth of stuff. Very useful. This is quite a new addition. It's like a, it's a decorating tool and you can use it for scraping, uh, raking things out. Um, you can actually, sort of, it's quite robust. You can bash it and use it as almost like a chisel. Really useful little gizmo um it's kind of taken the place of my knackered old chisel very useful this is a cheapo socket set that i can use with my drill via the adapter really just for getting me out of trouble it's the beer um torpedo level again for bigger things obviously you want a bigger level but just to get you out of trouble, it's perfect. A few pencils, a couple of carpenter pencils and just a standard pencil. And then in the back, uh, I've got a, I think this is a metric, um, uh, sort of Allen key multi-tool, handy to have. I mean, I've got, um, I've got Allen keys in the DeWalt bit set and a few other places, but it's just a handy little thing to have. And here's the drill bits I take with me. Now, if I know I'm going to be doing any sort of drilling into masonry or any, like, let's say, going into a house and fitting a load of curtain poles or whatever, then I take my SDS drill with me and, you know, all the other stuff. But because I always have my drill with me, it's just very useful to have all the drill bits just for just for quick jobs. So, DeWalt wood bits... Bosch multi-material bits, which is very useful because sometimes you need to drill through, say, a timber batten and then mark the plaster behind. And of course, if you did it with a normal kind of wood bit, you'd blunt it, but these are designed for it. So these are very good if you need to go through, say, timber into masonry. Metal bits, I'm yet to find decent metal bits. These just, as you can see, there's quite a few missing that snap or just go blunt, but yeah, that all right. And masonry bits which are, yeah, excellent. And I think that is it. As I say, this bag comes with me on every job. This kind of iteration, if you like, um, has been perfect, and I've never felt myself kind of wishing I'd pack this or pack that. Um, for sort of bigger, Bigger jobs, I use Makita sustainers with all my other power tools in and tend to sort of take kit as and when I need it. But this comes with me on every job. And a lot of the time you can just take this and it can kind of get the job done.
I think everybody's different, but certainly for me, it's taken a good two or three years and trial and error to sort of get this get this dog down. And it's worked very well. Thanks for watching. See ya.